Hi, welcome to the second part of my Metro 6R4 build. In this episode we're going to take both cars apart and we'll do some cutting to them and we will see where we end up. Uh, now I'm not too sure how often there's going to be a video but uh, my plan at the moment is that I will save up the content till there's enough so, uh, enough decent content to make a video that's worth watching uh, rather than trying to turn out one every week. Um, and I'm probably not going to show everything uh, there's certain things I think probably people don't need to see and just aren't interested in. like I don't for example I don't think anyone needs to see me take this metal report it's just a nut and bolt exercise but um, I will bring you in to see some of the interesting bits on it like uh, there's a bit of rust on it and stuff so you probably want to see see that but uh, the uh, it won't make any difference to the project that we're at now I would like to thank everyone for watching the last video it uh, went out on Thursday there, and after a bit of bother uploading it, um, I got it sorted in the end. That uh, it's it's now Sunday, and uh, it's got 1,400 views, which I'm actually really pleased about it. Uh, it's done far better than I thought, and uh, I would say I would just like to thank everyone for watching it. Um, and if you haven't seen it, uh, this is the first episode you've watched. Maybe you might want to go back and watch it. Because uh, it does give an overview of the project and it'll uh, bring up the speed with what we're doing and uh, what we're aiming for. Uh, now, a couple of my friends had suggested that I maybe should touch on some of the things that I've done in the past. And uh, I'm only going to give a brief overview of that, but uh, me and my friends would have uh, built modified cars back in the early 2000s. And with a view to getting them into magazines and uh, taking them to shows. And we did reasonably well at that, and uh, then we moved on to uh, fitting air and hydraulic suspension into cars, and I, I'd done that for about 15 years, and uh, now I'm restoring classic cars. But I still, I'm still interested in modified cars, and uh, sort of the creative aspect of that, and so hopefully this YouTube channel is going to become more of the hobby side of of this, and uh, it'll give me an excuse to basically build this metro and um, hopefully we'll continue on with it after that um, so I'll probably show you one of the cars that, I, that I've done uh, it's basically the only car that I have that is complete and um, it's, the, it's the last car that I built um, but I, I might do a full video on it at some point uh, but I would probably need to be better at the filming and the editing to sort of do it justice but I'll give you a quick look at it and, and this is only really to give you a sort of an idea of what I'm aiming for with the Metro project in terms of sort of fit and finish and um, style. Uh, but we'll have a look at it and you can you can see what you think. This here is my 1979 Mark II Escort. It has a ZTEC engine, a CR5 speed gearbox, and a Quaif limited slip diff. It drives pretty well for what it is, I mean it still drives like an old car, but it's certainly fast enough. Um, but as you can see, it has a, it's quite low, it has an air suspension fitted to it. And some people like that, and some people don't, and I guess that goes with the territory, you don't have to expect that. Probably I would say it drives quite similar to a car on coilovers. Um, I actually made it using a set of Bilstein inserts and some other bits and pieces. Um, but what I do like about it is it keeps the car practical. And I would use this car quite a lot, probably probably more than most people use their escorts, but as you can see it has a child seat in it. And I would take my daughter out to the play park at the lake with lots of speed bumps and we can get there, we can get back, there's no issues. Um, but probably maybe the, the main thing about it is the, the aesthetic. It's I suppose debatable, but uh, I quite think it looks quite aggressive. Um, let's say some people won't like it. But uh, that's the sort of thing I, I, I am into. Now, I don't expect the Metro to be on our suspension, certainly not. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't be nothing, nowhere near as low as this. But uh, just because the platform of the Boxster is that wee bit lower than a, a Metro, I mean visually, just to look at it, I think the front bumper or splitter is going to be quite close to the ground. And so I might have to look at fitting some of those air cups so they can raise it in order to keep it practical. But we'll cross that bridge and we'll come to it. Now, um, Probably my favourite feature of this car would be the wheels. And, uh, these look very similar to a set of wheels that you could have bought a long time ago. And I actually bought a set of those and 
play fitting into the car and I just wasn't happy with certain ways that it fitted so um, I actually had a friend of mine about 10 miles down the road he actually made these and uh, this is just the sort of thing that I like uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's not not very different to anyone else's escort but it's just a little bit different uh, that's the sort of style of thing that hopefully we're going to aim for with this metro uh, it's not really going to look like a rally car well it might, it might, it might look a bit like a rally car but It'll be more of a road car. I might even do some track days on it. I think that would be interesting to do. It's, it's something I haven't done before and I think it would be an ideal car for that. Uh, and in external style, it'll probably... Whenever they finished rallying the Metro 6 R4s, they used them for some circuit racing. And uh, those cars are slightly lower and a bit more aggressive looking. And hopefully that's the sort of style I'll be aiming for with it. But uh, we may get back to this uh, Metro and get it cut apart. I started stripping this here yesterday and uh, I've actually sold most of the parts to one man. He's going to take them and use them to fix his own car. Uh, saves them going down the landfill and keeps another car on the road. Yeah, uh, as I say, it's, it's pretty bad this one and uh, I'm sort of in one way I'm pleased to see this that uh, at least I'm not cutting up a perfectly good car. Um, they probably should have inspected it a bit better before <laughs> driving it home, although I've definitely driven worse, I'm sure. Uh, but this one is definitely, definitely not good. Um, yeah, so I would say this is beyond economical repair. Um, what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to chop the front of it off somewhere here. Um, and then I'm going to pull this out of the way. Uh, that should allow me to take the subframe and engine out in one piece. I'll take the subframe out of the back of it, the petrol tank. I have most of the interior. Uh, it's, it's sitting inside it, but it's stripped. And I have the dash to take out of it. and. By about that stage, you should be ready to start cutting the floor plan out of it. I've been working with this over the past couple of days. I've probably got about eight hours in it at this stage. It's actually pretty easy to take apart. I just decided to do it outside because uh, there's nothing in it worth uh, worrying about getting wet. Uh, when it comes to the Porsche, we'll have to do it inside, obviously, because there's a lot of wiring, but garage space is a bit of a premium here, so this one gets done outside. You can see the rust here that I'm talking about. It is. This one could be fixed. It's, I'm not saying it's beyond repair, but I don't think it would be worth fixing it to put it back to standard. Even the, this is the better side that uh, holds the subframe on. But so anyway, it's probably just as well it's getting cut up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down along this blue line here. Initially, I'm going to leave this pillar intact so I can uh, mount the door. Uh, you might have to try and do something else to mount the door. I don't know what this what's going to happen here, as I said before. Uh, but we're going to leave that for the time being, and we'll see. I'm going to cut it down this blue line along the floor uh, here, over right there. I'm going to leave the sill intact at the minute. I do think more is going to have to get cut out of that, but uh, we need to get a bit closer to offering the two up before we make them the sorts of decisions. And I'll cut it down here, up around here, take tubs out of it. Now, um, on a genuine Metro 6 R4, the firewall is around here, and this part is the cabin, and this part is the engine bay, and this bit is all open and exposed to the elements. Um, so what they do is they cut the Metro 6 R4 around this sort of area, and the whole back of the car is completely open. There's no back panel in it whatsoever, because this is basically the engine bay, and you open the tailgate, and you can just see the, the pulleys of the engine. Uh, in my car, this here is still going to be the cabin, and so I need to keep the seal. Here. I need to keep this bit so that uh, it can be watertight. So I'll probably end up cutting mine somewhere along here, and I think I need to plate these off because the lights mount into the tailgate of the Metro 6 R4. And what I'll probably end up doing is I'll have a cut something like this, and then that way. But we'll see. Now yeah, it's going to have to probably be bigger than this, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to cut it out to that stage just yet. This is going to be whenever we get a wee bit further along. But this is just to give you an idea of what I'm aiming for here. Um, now you can see there's a crate under the back of it. And the reason there is a crate under the back of it is... <laughs> I should have realised this when I was taking it apart. But I've been working away at it and uh, I've been in and out of it all day. And I had taken the doors off. And the last thing to do was to take the back side glass out of it. I was getting my dad to give me a hand with it. And I got into the car and uh, the next thing is the car tipped over and it seems pretty obvious now when you look at it, there's absolutely no weight on the front of it and it's all in the back. 
But uh, luckily we got away with it, and there's nothing got damaged. And uh, it was it was it was an interesting uh, time. But probably should have filmed it. But just in the interest of speeding things up and getting on with the project, uh, just only going to film certain things. But uh, it's time to get the grinder out and get this one cut up. So this is what the metro is looking like now. I've already got cut out of it. Uh, there's still a wee bit more to go. Uh, I'm going to need to take out the inner wheel arches and I'm going to need to take off the inner settle. I uh, need to um, probably brace it up before doing that. I uh, just want to make sure that things stay nice and square. Right. What I'm going to try and do is explain what I'm thinking about doing with these sills. So this is a template I've made of the Porsche sill and I suppose in an ideal world what you would do is you would take your pinch weld and you'd mount the pinch weld to the pinch weld weld those together but uh, obviously the Porsche is so much wider so the pinch weld would actually be out about here and as you can see there's an absolutely no way the side skirt is ever going to work with it so what I'm going to try and do is mount it somewhere down here uh, it won't actually meet on this line but something similar to you know this sort of height it'll have to be slightly further out and then trim away the outside um, piece of the like the cosmetic section of the Porsche Boxster sill and hopefully that's going to allow me enough room to get the side skirt on. Now, the good thing is the metal sill is very deep anyway, so hopefully we'll be in the ballpark. Uh, but this is something I'm going to try first anyway because the sill is completely rotten. And, uh, you know, one way or the other it's going to have to get cut off the car. So we'll be able to cut this off, try it, and uh, if it doesn't work we'll just have to get another sill and try something else. So this is a look at the boxer now. It's a bit different from the last time you've seen it. Um, I must say at this stage it kind of feels a bit like a joke. It's got a bit out of hand. But um, we've come this far so we're going to have to carry on. Uh, now there's still some stuff in, in this here and uh, the reason being is it's I want to keep it a run in the driving car. Uh, I've still got the radiator packs in the front. I have no body kit yet so I don't know how much to cut off this and so that can sit there for now. Um, there's some things now I've seen that I'm going to have to change my plans on. and. Um, this header tank, I had planned that I was going to move this and also the wiring and uh, leave it sort of a cleaned boot floor uh, but because this header tank is so big and there's three pipes in the bottom of it I just can't see where I can move it to and not end up with some sort of air leak in the, or air lock in the lane and um, so that's going to have to stay uh, what I'm probably going to do is box this off uh, kind of like a Renault 5 Turbo 2 and uh, carpet it and uh, that'll solve that problem and uh, just on to another problem here now we've already talked about this before and uh, what I had planned to do was to keep the most of this pillar in place and I thought that some of the side skirt would probably cover it uh, just trim away a bit of it try and work something out for the hinges but uh, it's actually turned out that the entire metro would actually fit inside of the boxer and um, so what I'm going to do now is cut this entire uh, outer section off. Hopefully there'll be a straight piece in here and I'm going to use that to mount the door hinges to and then I'm going to build a folded box section frame that's going to replace the strength on the inside. Uh, so basically whatever's cut out will be replaced you know just on the inside and then there'll be another piece that goes from there up to the strut top and the reason for that is that this section here is actually three inches too far out so uh, it'll have to get cut back to there and let's say the strength will be put back into it here and now if you look at these sills and the inner sills in this uh, 
box so they're really quite beefy and uh, there's also up in here a nice beefy section and there's some boron steel in behind here now I don't really think that would be weldable for the average man in a garage so I'm hoping to leave all that in place um, the, um, so that's the plan I want to try and leave the sills structure of the can and remove this outer section uh, then I need to put the metro on top and do a few measurements and see where it sits if it's not gonna work right I mean if the pinch weld is too high um, you know it means the body is gonna sit too high and then the wheel arches aren't gonna sit central so um, I might have to change the design I might have to make a new outer sill to suit and maybe even take a bit off the bottom of the door um, which wouldn't be ideal but it's the sort of things that uh, you know might have to be done to make this work uh, the way I want to work it. Uh, my only other option is to cut the entire sill and structure off this here and use the metro sill and uh, personally I would rather use this if I can and uh, I think that would be the better way to go if I can make it work. But I say things could change, and uh, we might have to might have to adapt. But uh, so that's where I'm up to now. Um, I sort of thought it'd be a wee bit further, but I'm getting on okay. Uh, by the next video, um, I'll have this all trimmed down, and we will hopefully be test fitting the shell onto it. And at that stage, we'll uh, see how much trouble I'm in. And I would say probably from what I can see quite a bit but uh, if you want you can subscribe and uh, tune in next time